everybody. It's Christmas Eve. Welcome back to Selena's Corner. So um, I was going to show you guys um, how I decorated a cake and um, I have just so much going on that I kind of worked ahead a little bit. So um, I will take a picture. I will take a picture of this once it's cut before I post the video of what I'm doing. Because there's a checkerboard design hiding underneath this frosting. Um, I've made the same frosting that Joshua made in his macaron video for this cake. And I have put it on a cake board and I have um, centered it as good as possible. I just kind of wing it. <laughs> so, anyway. So I have finally decided to try the um, hard apple pie cider that I made uh, back in September and this is how I chose to try it. In a cup with an orange, some cloves, and a cinnamon stick. Wow, that's really good. So I will post a link to the method that I used. Um, what I did was I started with an apple pie um, cider and then I turned it into a hard apple pie cider and then I carbonated it so you can drink it cold. Um, my boss, my general manager, he's, he said his favorite way to drink it was over ice. I was like, oh well I never thought about drinking a you know, hard, cider, hard cider over ice. I usually think that you know you drink it warm, mold, or um, you drink it in a beer, beer glass like a beer coaster. Never thought about putting it over ice, but hey, I'll try it. <laughs> I've got two bottles of it. You know, this this is actually two to three servings, depending on you know how big of a glass it's used. So I just I'm just doing one serving tonight. I won't drink too much because yeah, I don't want to get tipsy. <laughs> tipsy while I'm doing my video for you. So anyway, um, so like a lot of cakes that I designed, just off the top of my head, I'm just going to kind of wing this. Um, I had an idea to do kind of a little snow globe, maybe a snow scene type thing. And um, I have an idea of what I'd like to do. So we're going to, this is a, we're going to make it up as we go along video. We're just going to have some fun. So basically, I did a checkerboard cake with red, green, and white. I did a French vanilla box mix. Um, it's on sale, you know, 50 cents or something like that. I grabbed like 10 of chocolate and dark chocolate and French vanilla and yellow because you just never know when you need cake or cake mix. So um, cake mix usually is about four cups. And so I divided that as best I could into three pans. and. Um, I didn't do anything with one of them because it's French vanilla and then I colored uh, one um, red and one Christmas green. So I have a red and a Christmas green. So basically I started with red, white, and green on the bottom and then uh, green, red, and white and then white, red, and green I think. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, so when you cut it, it's supposed to have a checkerboard design. So when we cut it tomorrow, um, I'll make sure that I take a picture of it so that you can see what it looks like on the inside. Because you can't really tell until you cut it what the design looks like. I mean, it just looks like, you know, some circles with different color cake on it until it's actually cut. So I'll take a picture of it when it's cut. So I had a little bit of frosting left over. And I was going to color it red, and I was going to color it green, and I was going to this, and I'm going to that, and I'm going to the other thing, and you know what? I decided I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use it like it is, and I'm going to I'm going to put a border on my cake, put a little snow there in the center. I've already I took the um, what I'm going to use as my snow globe and centered it as best I could on the cake and I pressed it down so I would know what my what my border is for my lines to stay inside my lines to color inside it. And um, of course I've got just a little bit left of this gold mist 
I'm gonna use this little snowman. These are these are all ornaments. And I got these two little trees, but you know I've tried it a couple times and both of the trees will not fit inside of that little globe. And that's okay. That's quite alright. We can make do without it. So I'm gonna press this down inside of the cake. I also have some little um, sweet tooth fairy star sprinkles that I used for the fly cake that I made. And um, I'll throw a picture in the uh, video um, so you can see what that looked like when it was cut. Because you can't really tell what they are until you cut them. And so that's the neat surprise about them is that, you know, the cool way that they look on the inside. And I'm going to decorate with some holly berries. So there are my themes green and white. Ooh, snow globe. I swear I've only had two sips of that. I, I, I swear I've only had two sips of that. So, um, if you like what you see today, remember to like and subscribe and share and leave a comment and be nice, please. Oh, and what do you think? My ugly sweater. <laughs> it's ugly sweater day at work. So, I decided to just keep it on and do, normally we have team member shirts that we wear. I'm a manager, so I just business casual is what I is what I'm required to wear. I don't have to wear the team member shirt that's got the logo on it. Just log up my name tag on and I'm dressed appropriately. I'm good to go. But I like to wear the logo shirts. I just I just like the shirts. I think they're really nice. They're real nice uh, polar shirts. So I wear those all the time. I can't wear my camera though because I haven't asked if it's okay because you know they have the logo on it. So I don't know if they want me including them in, uh, in, video, in my videos. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, normally the last thing I put on a cake is the border. Because we're messing with it here and there and the other thing. We don't want to knock that off or you know stick our hand in there while we're trying to do something else. So normally I do the border last. And I work from the bottom to the top. And once I do the top, border, we're done. Um, I normally would um, find a neat little um, saying, like when I did a, the Air Jordan logo for somebody's birthday cake, um, because they just absolutely love Michael Jordan. Um, it was the Air Jordan logo, so I wrote, I hope you Ed, Air Jordan your birthday. So just silly little things like that. You know, kids love that kind of stuff. So it's just like um, the Jaws cake that I did for my son Chris when he was nine. Um, I put on there just when he thought it was safe. Chris turned nine. That kind of stuff. But you know, this is for my family, and they've had my cakes 50, 60, 70, 100 times. <laughs> so I'm not going to write on it. I'm just going to do like like a snow theme. I'm going to use these little stars as my snowflakes. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the main theme of my cake. So I'm going to put my tree on here. And I'm going to press it down. And I froze this cake overnight. And I'm going to put my little snowman on here. I'm just going to kind of swish him down a little and turn him around so the tree is behind him. And I'm going to lean him back just a little bit. So like that. Okay. I'm going to get some of my little stars out. See if i got something I can put them in. One of my little glass bowls I always use. Seems like the holiday season is just like you're endlessly cleaning your kitchen. <laughs> Um, let's see, earlier tonight I did, um, I saw when I decided, it's 10.30 at night, and I saw when I decided if I'm going to do those cookies or not. But I still have goods for that. I've been messing around, so. Um, earlier I did uh, my great-grandma's fruit salad, and I always do uh, one batch with um, 
coconut and one batch without because um, half my family doesn't like coconut. <laughs> I love it, but they don't like it. So I'm just going to put some little stars on here to make it look like snow. And remember, we're just doing it. You know, it's your cake. Decorate it any way you want to. Think about what you want and then, you know, make a plan and then work that plan. So I've been thinking about this for a while. And usually when I'm about to decorate a cake for somebody, I think about it for a while because I, I want it to be nice for them. So I'm just going to put a bunch of these on here. Okay. Let's make it look like snow. I could probably get some in there in that tree too. Oops. I can't see where it went because everything's white. <laughs> so if everybody's having a good time, I uploaded the um, chocolate bond video earlier. I finally got a chance to get that taken care of. When the videos are long, they take a while because my video camera doesn't do movie format. So I have to upload it to YouTube and then re-download it in the correct format so I can um, put it all together in the um, program that I use. Emoticon, I think is what it's called. That's probably not the right way to say it. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it around for myself. And also what I did was... I always wait until the frosting is crusty. I let it dry for a little while after I frost the cake until it's crusty. And then that's when I will put the pattern on my cakes. And what I do is, um, let's say I was going to do a picture of a snowman, for instance. And I would make it the size that I would want to fit on my cake. And then I would take that, that picture and I would poke little holes in it with either a toothpick or a straight pin or a safety pin, whatever you want, all around that design. So that what happens is, is on the back side of that design, you've got these little, <clears throat> like, bumps. And you take that after the cake is crusty and lay it on your cake gently and rub over the design so that it leaves a design on your cake. And then you can just follow that design with your black, normally what you would do, and then fill it in however you plan to fill it in. Either, you know, with little stars or um, just plain frosting, and then you can use a, a paintbrush or a toothpick or something like that to, you know, fill it into the corners of your design. To fill your design out. So that's how I put designs on my cake. So, anyway, so they're all made of frosting instead of airbrush. Yes, it takes a little longer, but it looks really nice and it looks exactly like the foot. It looks exactly like the picture. And that's the cooler part. Is it looks exactly like the picture when you do it that way. And then you have something to follow. So what I did was I took a paper towel, which also has a design on it, and I used the side, see there's either like a flat side or there's a bumpy side. So I took the bumpy side and I pressed it on the sides of my cake, then I pressed it on the top of the cake, and I didn't, I didn't make my cake perfectly smooth like I normally would when I'm going to put a design on a cake because it's supposed to look like snow, right? And snow isn't perfectly smooth, right? So I didn't make my frosting perfectly smooth like I normally would for an, another cake. So, now, this is what I have so far. I got little stars, okay, and I have them inside my design. Now, I'm hoping that I can put this little snow globe on here without disturbing my little tree and my little snowman. Just go ever so gently. I was 
pray the tree might give me issues. I press it down a little bit, then where the tree was kind of catching on the glass, you can't see it anymore. So now we have a snow globe. Our snow is sitting on the bottom like it is before you shake a snow globe. Okay? Take a picture right quick and then I'm going to walk around and I'll bring it a little closer to the camera for you. I do not know how to make this thing go in and out. I'm still learning. <laughs> Don't put me in comments. Okay. okay. So I even polished the snow globe before I put it on here. I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to come around over there so you can see it. You see? can uh, put a little bit of frosting underneath the cake before you put it on the board. Normally I cover it with foil, but I wanted it to be all white. So I didn't cover it with foil this time. So, you can also put a little bit of frosting underneath the cake board on top of this little doily. This is just a little dollar platter that I've bought at the Dollar Tree for a buck. So the uh, doilies I got from, from Walmart and cake boards um, I got when I made the cheesecake, the strawberry cheesecake for a Pampered Chef video that I did. So there you go. Alrighty. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of my snow flakes on the cake. You just gently press them on here and there and the other place. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just wherever. Because you're just kind of working randomly. And even though the frosting is, is crusty now, it's still soft enough to put your snowflakes on and press them down so that they stay when the cake gets smooth. Just put them here and there and the other place. And you know, I've never had a turntable to make my cakes, decorate my cakes with. I just always usually sat at sat at the dining room table and um, didn't have it doesn't have a tablecloth on it or anything like that so I could just move it around as I needed to whether it was an oblong cake or a round cake didn't matter you just gotta be gentle with it make sure your fingers are on the edge of the, the cake board so you don't accidentally stick your finger in the cake. Because then you gotta fix it. So that is that that's actually a fun trick is trying to figure out how to fix mistakes. And it's like, okay, what happened there? And I tell you, you haven't lived until you have made a cake late at night because uh, somebody called you last minute and asked you to make a cake. And uh you go in and you take a shower and you get cleaned up and you come back out only to find out that the cat has licked the corner of the cake. So now and you've got to start all over again. Yeah, I was pretty mad. I was like, I could not believe she did that. She never bothered any of my cakes before. 
And all of a sudden, she is taking an interest in my cake. So now I'm going to just like randomly stick a star up here and there. Oh, there's that little star that I dropped earlier. And right on that, is, it was white, so I didn't see it. So now I'm just going to stick one here and there and the other place. Yeah, so I was kind of mad at her. And <laughs> people were like, oh, you know, cats don't eat sweets. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. And <laughs> cats like sweets. She had a daughter who would always always get into my mom's purse and steal her Milky Way bars. You know, <laughs> pets cannot have chocolate, right? It is a wonder this cat did not kill herself from getting into these chocolate bars. So another thing that she did was um, a friend from church came by and she had a bunch of apricot nut breads that she had spent hours, hours making, and she was delivering an apricot nut bread, and she had her windows down, and my cat Callie got into her car and helped herself to one of her banana nut breads. So, that is why I know how to make apricot nut breads. Did I say banana nut bread? Apricot nut breads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the book, The Joy of Cooking, is amazing. <laughs> I had never been so embarrassed and mortified in my life than when this cat got in her car and ate her apricot nut bread that she was going around gifting <laughs> to, her, to her friends from church. Yeah, I mm, cannot believe that she had done this. So now I'm just going. I'm just going around the sides here, or there, go to place. Doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, snowflakes aren't perfect, right? They just fall here and there in the other place. So we don't want our snowflakes to be perfect, too. We're just going to put them here and there. And I use these. I use these in the blue part of the uh, flag cake that I made, hoping that the stars would show up in the blue, you know, like the flag. No. They're so delicate that they just melted right into the right into the, the cake as it baked. I was sad. I just thought it was a neat idea. It didn't work out. And sometimes dry ideas just flop. That's just how it is. Think of something else. I needed to find the, um, and I'm going to grab them next time I see them, the hard candy star sprinkles. I think those would work great. But these are just like sugar. Just basically sugar stars. They're amazing decoration, but they just didn't stand up to the heat. Or I guess the wet, the wet batter. We're just making little snowflakes here and there now. I will put a link to. Um, my cake decorating tips that I have on uh, Facebook. It was a note and uh, Facebook doesn't do notes anymore. So I copied it and resaved it. Just work your way around the cake. Doesn't have to be perfect. You see a little flaw or something, you see a little crumb in the cake, just put a star over it. You might pick it up. No. I think I need some of those uh, decorating tweezers. Normally you can't see the cake through the sides, but 
I used two small cake boards so I couldn't get as much icing on as I wanted to. And thankfully it's at the bottom of the cake, so I'll be able to hide it with the, the border when I pack that on. So, remove all snowflakes. Now take a picture. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some little dots of frosting on the snow globe and then stick some of our snowflakes on the snow globe. So I need to stir this up. Now this is a made with milk so I let it sit out all night so that's why it, doesn't, it didn't spoil. I let it sit out. Good. I make a honey meat too. I, do a, I did a mold honey meat this year. That one takes a year to make. Huh, that's good. So I, I might make that again. So we have our cup here. So we can fill our decorator bag. I'm going to still. I don't know what I did. When I broke my finger, I must have messed up a tendon or something. Sometimes that, it hurts. My finger locks <laughs> closed and it hurts to get it unstuck. Right. So I'm not going to put a lot in here because I'm I'm going to need this for the for the border. You know what? I'm not going to mess up the decorator bag for that. So I just need a little tiny bit to do the dots on the, on the globe. So we get one of these little goodie ones. I need to put my mixer away. It gets hidden behind all of my baking. Hands. Yeah, put the scissors away again. I keep hiding them for myself. <laughs> I don't know why. I just do. I don't want to do too big of a hole. Because we're just going to put little dots. On our snow globe. Here and there and the other place. Remember, it's your cake, it's your design. You can do it however you want to. Yeah, if it helps, you can, you know, you can write down what it is you're thinking of doing. I think about stuff for a really long time before I do them. Especially if it's an important birthday cake. Because I know how important birthday cakes are to me. I don't want to mess up somebody else's birthday because I messed up their cake. Got that done, Woody. 
wedding cakes. She made quite a bit of money doing wedding cakes. I always wanted to go to uh, the Wilton's school in Illinois and learn how to do cakes, like fancy smancy wedding cakes. Never had the time. It's like every time I seem it seemed like every time I planned on doing something, you know, something would come up that would prevent me from doing that. I was like, okay, so maybe I don't need to do that. It's like when I went back to school and got my GED. Um, I my intention was to, because I had already finished business school and. They didn't follow through with helping me get my GED because I was a high school dropout for 44 years. 44 years. And they were supposed to help me get my GED and they kind of missed that stuff, I guess. <laughs> so, from back, I went to night school a couple nights a week for a couple months and brushed up on my math. Told you I don't math. And uh, went and took the GED and we're in the top 5% of all test takers in the state of South Carolina. I don't know if I'm bragging about something or not, but I did. I was very, very proud of myself. And I felt like a big old dummy because I waited so long to do it. Looking at it, so you look at it and you go, Yeah, that's what I was looking for. So anyway, back to what I was trying to, try to talk about. So I went back and got my GED so that I could transfer the credits that I had from business college to um, get a bachelor's degree so that I could be a CPA because when I went to business college and was taking the administrative assistance courses, <laughs> when I started doing the accounting classes, the county part of those classes because when you take the administrative assistance courses you kind of learn a little bit of everything i didn't learn how to type until i was 30 years old and boy that was fun <laughs> not yeah i couldn't type in high school and i was just like oh, i couldn't type in high school how am i going to do this oh yeah yay so anyway so that was my plan was to get my ged go back to school, and get my CPA. In the meantime, my mom fell and broke her hip. And they treated her so poorly while she was out from work. It, it happened on the job, on the clock, and she was denied her workers' comp. They called it an idiopathic fall. Could have happened to anyone, anytime, anywhere. No, <laughs> no. She fell because she caught her foot on a the leg of a bench as she was walking by it. Somebody, she, somebody called her name and she looked as she was walking by. She caught her foot on that bench and down to the ground she went. And interestingly enough, when we went to the workers' cop hearing, that part of the video was missing. Weird. What a coincidence. So anyway. They treated her so poorly while she was out, she wouldn't go back to work. And I don't blame her. She was 63 years old. So, to make up for the money that she wasn't going to be bringing anymore, because we shared a house together, we, we split everything. I got 
part time job. So I had a full time job and a part time job. And uh, so my dream kind of went out the window. And so, anyway, it all worked out. So, now what I did is I clipped up just a little bit of the bag so that I could put a star tip in there to do your art border with. And I'm using a number 22, a Wilton's number 22 tip. It's a star tip. And that's normally what I, it's a little bit bigger opening. That's what I normally use to do borders with. So. Did a very good job of leveling the cake out, did I? <laughs> it's kind of leaning. Sorry about that. Push this down. I'm putting frosting, icing, frosting, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put it in this bag. And I'm going to work on my border. Cakes. I stopped decorating cakes for a while because I, I hurt my I hyperextended a ligament in my wrist at work. Um, the security company that I worked for before the job here. And uh, I absolutely could not hold the decorating bag for the longest time. So I've gotten to the point now where I'm just like, you know what? I, I really enjoy decorating cakes. So I'm kind of squishing it to get the air bubbles out. There's still a few in there. Not starting out. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little shell border. And basically you're going to you're going to press and have a a puff border. I guess is what it is. You're going to do a puff and a tail. A puff and a tail. A puff and a tail. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And I'm going to try this. I always try to start at the back. So if I miscalculate how many I'm doing, the mistake is at the back and it's not as noticeable. Let me take a, a quick picture of where we are so far. So it's a little... The little dots that I did on the glass, if they got little points on them, all I got to do is just kind of touch it. Points will go away. Alrighty. Alright, so like I said, I usually start at the back, and I'm right handed. So because I'm right-handed, I'm going to go in this direction, okay? If you were left-handed, you would go you would go in the opposite direction. So if Joshua's left-handed, I'm right-handed. So I'm just going to... I don't have a lot of frosting left, so I'm going to try to do this. So I have enough for the top. And that's why I'm starting at the bottom because if I don't, if I don't have enough left, I'm not going to make another batch just to do a border. If I don't have enough left, because um, those layers to do the checkerboard, I have to frost all of those rings to keep them to hold them together. So that takes up a little bit extra frost. But I'm not going to make another batch. Just to do a top border, I'll figure out, I'll do something else or I'll just leave it like it is. And when you're doing, when you're doing an oblong or a square cake, you always want to start your shells at the corner so that your tail ends at your, your shell. At your scalp and you can always drag that tail a little bit more 
to make it eat. Or if you see, you might not make it, you just kind of shorten up a couple and then it'll even out. And so overlap a little bit more than you have on the other ones, it all evens out. People don't really pay that much attention to that kind of detail. I mean, if it looks pretty uniform, they're just like, ah, nice. So I think I have enough to do a top border, but I just want to show you how it covered up that little bit. Take another picture. exactly on the edge, like on here on the edge, you want to be just above the edge and that way your design doesn't fall off the cake. Okay? Now, if you make a mistake, okay, wait. Don't try to take it off when it's wet. Remember how I said the, the frosting will get crusty? So what you do is you wait and you get a toothpick and you can lift that mistake off because now it's kind of dry and it'll just come off in one piece and then you can just start again. Right, so now I'm just going to go along the top. Cross your fingers and hold your breath. I got enough to go all the way around. Okay. As I said, I was not going to make another batch. Just the old borders. I had come up with something else. And see, that's the thing about cake decorating is, you know, you got to be flexible. You know, you change your plan in the middle of the game if you need to. I mean, who's going to know besides you? Nobody. I bought Joshua a cake decorating kit for his birthday because he always says that he would like to see how I pulled that away so it wouldn't have that little peak on it. Alright. So what do you think so far? You can definitely tell I'm out of practice, but I think it looks cute so far. Take a little picture. to the front. Okay. So now, what do we want to do now? Do we want to add anything else? Do we want to leave it like it is? I mean, he's got a little bit of gold on there, so maybe I'll just add a little bit of gold. How about that? Let's do that. I'm 
need a toothpick. So if I drop it in the wrong place, I can just use a toothpick to nudge it back into nudge it into the place that I want. Sometimes when you're making when you're making a cake, you'll you'll get an idea while you're in the middle of the cake to make it look better. Stuck together. <laughs> My management team was chatting it up. They're all excited about their secret Santa gifts. So I got everybody this year because. Um, I just wanted to do something nice for everybody. I just love my, my management team. They're great people. They work hard. They love what they do. We have a lot of fun. They're like family to me. <laughs> so um, they gave me a tip because I took care of everybody and they, they know that you know it cost me a little bit of money to make all those extra extracts and liqueurs. So they, they gave me a tip today and I was like, I don't know why you guys give me tips because you know I'm just going to turn around and buy more vodka <laughs> and make more alcohol. That's what I do. Because they're always asking me, hey, you got any on the road? You got any, you got any coconut rum? Last time, um, one of them asked if I had any coconut rum. I had to tell, I had to tell her that, no, I don't have any right now. I'm all out. And it, it takes two weeks to make. <laughs> so I kind of fibbed because um, <laughs> she was getting coconut rum in her little um, goodie bag <laughs> that I gave everybody. So, I said, I have some Amaretto, how about that? So she set up for the Amaretto. Because I didn't have any coconut rum. Trying to figure out who I can pawn this glue off on that I don't like. Um, I couldn't find any Everclear when you're. So I made it with the uh, 151 and gold rum. Do not like it at all. So it's sitting on my shelf, unloved, looking for somebody who's like, hm, I drink it. I drink anything. <laughs> uh -oh. I dropped one. Come out, Adina. Come out, come out, come out. Oops. <laughs> Well, maybe I can pick it up, I don't know. Yeah, I cannot believe it is Christmas Eve and I still need to wrap gifts. I feel like the mom waiting for the kids to go to bed so I can wrap my gifts so that I can get to bed so Santa can come. Because you know Santa ain't coming until you get to bed. Probably looking at his watch going, um, I got stuff to do. And you like to uh, move it along. Two more. Flipped it on the floor. And I already vacuumed. Well, the robot vacuumed. Now I still have to mop. I'll mop before I go to bed. Alright. So that's the top. Most 
from the bottom. I'm liking the way this is coming together. I normally would do this with a uh, frosting, but I just didn't want to take the time to color it. So I had one other thing to do. And I think because I made the cake, I'm not going to make the, the cookie. Maybe I'll make the cookies for New Year's because I always do a party for New Year's. Um, I did 25 New Year's parties in a row because after I had children, I didn't go out and party anymore. I stayed home. So I would do a New Year's Eve party and we would do food and eggnog and champagne toast at midnight. We would do the little, the little jump into the new year thing. That was like that. Especially my younger son. He loved, he loves doing stuff like that. I do too. Okay. So I keep dropping these. Little red. You didn't see that, did you? Let's <laughs> put that over there. Yeah, it just went flying. Alright. So remember, if you like what you see today, be sure to like, subscribe, share, leave a comment, be nice. This one just doesn't want to go on it. It just like keeps falling off. Okay, I'm gonna have to find that one because I've already done the floor. I have to set them up so. such a hard time on the bottom. Probably because it's on the side of the cake. Okay, so let's try this. We'll pick it up with some frosting. That work? Necessity is the mother of invention. Why I think of that soon? <laughs> okay. See, we're all learning things. So, in the comments, if you would, um, let me know um, something that you'd like for me to do for you. Maybe a certain kind of cake you'd like to see me make. Certain kind of pie, maybe. I like pie. I love that movie, American Jewelry. They're playing that game. Pies and cakes, pies and cakes. It's my favorite category. Mm-hmm, sure is. <laughs> it is definitely my favorite category. That movie's so cute. I don't think I'm going to use any of the green. I could, but I don't think I'm going to. I like it just like this. What do you think? With the gold.
almost done. Just about seven more to go. Probably would have got done a little bit sooner if I hadn't kept fighting. <laughs> that one or two. Before I figured out, hey, maybe I'll put some frosting on the toothpick, it'll be easier. I got the hot chocolate bomb video up, so I'm excited about that. I put some tips in there about the little doggy cookies. Um, you can buy the um, the um, cutters, the little doggy cookie cutters. I think I got I think I got them on Amazon, but I had some for the big dogs and the little dogs. And um, they had fire hydrants and um, little doggies and dog house, dog bones. Pretty cute. I think they probably, I have some in the store. I think I saw a big dog once the other day. My little ones might be in my storage shed, I'm not sure. I'll have to find out because I have a little dog and my, my son has a big dog. He got a bully named Biff, which I thought was just genius. He is beautiful. He's a, he's a dark brindle and he's just the happiest dog. He is so hard. He is. He is just the happiest dog I've ever seen. But he, he had doggy parents that, that loved him, so. Alright. Fine. You think we need to put some rain on him? What do you think? Yes? No? I thought I was wrong with you. Maybe I should. Maybe just a little tiny bit. I also made a, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I made my sweet potato casserole. That's not from my great grandma. And her um, fruit salad. Made that. One of the coconut ones out because, you know, like I said, some, some people don't like coconut. I do. Coconut, nuts, I like all that stuff. Red licorice, but I don't like black. I will eat it. I like I like ouzo, but I don't like a lot of ouzo because it, it seems like forever before I can taste anything but licorice. But I like ouzo. It's good. And sambuca. I like that too. Just like small, small doses. I'm a rum drinker. I like I like white liquor. Rum and coke with lime is my drink. Tall and margaritas. I make a mean margarita and a mean martini. First job, first bartender job I had was in a Mexican food restaurant. I worked for that one. I worked for a superhero. No, super villain. Well, she was a hero to me, but <laughs> you know. Anyway, 
So my first part in the job I worked for a super villain. Alright. So what do you think? Take a pizza. I hope everybody has, has a nice holiday, no matter what you celebrate. Alright, there you go. That's my version of a snow globe cake. appreciate you stopping by Selena's Corner, and I hope to see you again next time. Enjoy your holidays. Thank you. Bye.